councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. In Dallas, Texas, three shots were fired at President Kennedy's motorcade in downtown Dallas. The first reports say that President Kennedy has been seriously wounded by this shooting. It is a big idea. A new world order. It was almost as if it were a planned implosion. It just pancakes. Either you are with us, or you are with the terrorists. But I also believe that a lot of gun owners would agree that AK-47s belong in the hands of soldiers, not in the hands of criminals. Guns will be taken. No one will be able to be armed. We will take all guns. For many of the police and guard troops, it is an uncomfortable job to do this in an American city. It's global governance at last. Is it one world? The central bank is in charge. But aren't we all just living and dying for what the central banks do? As for me, give me liberty or give me death! The answer to 1984 is 1776. It's Thursday, the 18th day of April, 2013. I'm your host, Alex Jones. This is another live edition of InfoWars Nightly News. It is 7.05 Central Standard Time right now. And we've, a lot of us have been working around the clock covering the different developments. Before I get to all this news, I just want to say this. There is no doubt this was a totally staged event now, not just provocateur. And when I saw the FBI press conference about an hour ago, with Dan Badandi there asking the questions. They shut another third conference down after it. He had cops threatening him, FBI threatening him before and after. And the FBI arrogant goon, just a mafia, gets up there and goes, you only trust photos we give you. You don't look at any other photos. For a hundred years, we've used you to help capture bad guys. The ones that didn't pay Jig or Hoover off or buy them enough dresses. And he basically goes on and says, we need your eyes and ears on this, but only on the two people we show you. No one else. Don't look at the other photos. Now, I mean, who would say that? They'd say, this is who we really think it is, not the last couple of groups of patsies that we've exposed. You don't say, don't look at anything else. In media, don't talk about anything else, because we released the photos, there were public photos, but we dug through them that showed dozens of now Navy SEALs with the Navy SEAL hats and the outfits out there. We've shown all that. We're going to go over that again in a moment. Right around the people with the supposed bombs, right where the bomb goes off. And none of the media will touch these. They'll show a guy on a roof and go, who's that? Because it's blurred. They don't want to touch this. And now the FBI, after they said yesterday, we have the guy that did it, the press conference. And then something changed and they send troops to take over a courthouse and the guy disappears and never mind that now we have who we think did it with different color backpacks and then i'm watching cnn right before we went on tonight and uh the financial chick what's her name she used to be on cnbc what's her name she's on there with the guest on the streets of boston going it's probably going to be veterans these guys they they look confident we're going to show you some of that video yeah, it's, it's the veterans. It's They're the ones. there, Because they've been branding. Veterans are going to bomb all of us for the last few years, and we've got to take all their guns. And, I mean, they're the new enemy. And I said, wow, you know, the, what's worse than the Tea Party? Only veterans. What's worse than gun owners? Only veterans. I mean, it's the number one enemy, uh, they've told us. And, and so um, now, and of course, all the left-wing, White House-controlled CNN, MSNBC said, it's going to be right-wingers yesterday. We've gotten the word. <laughs> We're going to blame it all on you guys. We're the heroes. We're the heroes. We're the heroes. And then meanwhile, you've got Kraft International, it looks like. It's got their, their symbol out there, a Navy SEAL sheep dip group, sitting there running around all over the place, and guys with big black backpacks everywhere, and other people with black backpacks. So it looks like hillbilly patsies. We're going to show some of that here in a moment. But first, the FBI, this is their new footage. They said, ignore everything else. 
Ignore everything else. Ignore all the Saudis crawling all over it and Obama in an emergency meeting with the Saudi foreign minister. Ignore all that. Ignore everything. No, no, no. There's this footage. Let's go ahead and show this footage. Look, they're blurring a guy out in the doorway, but they didn't blur him from the other angle as the supposed suspects uh, walk by. And when you see that footage, you can see the guy with an earpiece. They walk by, he looks at him, and then it just continues on. The whole thing uh, is just absolutely, incredibly suspicious. So here you can see him, the earpiece, he's talking. And uh, then after he goes back by, they then show that guy from the other angle, and he is blurred out. So very, very important uh, on that front. And Infowars.com is receiving about 100,000 new visitors, not, not, not hits, visitors a minute when I talk to our IT folks. That's why it takes the site a few seconds to load, but the caching is working. Uh, the, the, the server systems, CDNs, clouds are working. And so that's the good news here. You guys can sit up there at your press conference and, and say, only look at this, look at nothing else, which is incredibly guilty. Like, whatever you do, don't dig in my backyard. You know, it's just whatever you do, ignore the elephant in the room. But it doesn't matter. The people know. And they've seen what you've done, and they've seen every sitcom and drama saying the veterans and right-wingers are going to blow you up next week. Give your guns up. And now Obama says, I don't care if Congress didn't, didn't ban the guns. I'm going to do it with executive order. That just came out about an hour ago. I mean, this is, this is a takeover. It's like you've seen in Europe. Obama's just a puppet. I mean, you've got Axelrod and all his insiders going, it will be right-wingers. It's a lone person. It's only one. And he's a right-winger. We, we can't say anything else. That was yesterday morning and the night before. And then now it's, oh, no, it's these guys. Oh, no, it's those guys. But just know it's a right-winger. And then I'm watching CNN, and they're like, I'm afraid it's going to be veterans. And, and, and I found the article. They had CNN saying that two nights ago. You know, we have a feeling it's going to be veterans. It's just a feeling. And, and, and then when it ends up being that, just remember that. They just magically knew. They, you know, they're so good at it. No, it's a bunch of private contractors and groups that are going to get billions of dollars out of turning America into a police state and roughing you and your family up when they... Go to Infowars.com. Type in papers, please, Infowars.com. And it shows Nazi Germany checking papers and then Boston with the military checking some businessmen's papers. When they had hundreds and 400 military troops everywhere... 2,000 police and it didn't stop this. Navy SEALs everywhere where the bomb went off. Let's say they're not involved. You know, let's say the moon's made of cheese, they're not involved. And still it didn't protect you. Now this is about them running our lives and they're the new super class where, oh, you're a Navy SEAL, that means you walk on water. Here it is, FBI ignores men with backpacks at scene of Boston bombing. Other photos will not be deemed credible. That's, that's what they say uh, in this video we're about to go to, where the FBI gets up there, they're the FBI, Federal Bureau of Godliness, and they say, do not look at anybody else but these photos. Ignore everything else. Don't notice the man behind the curtain. No, look at the big projected eyes. So let's go ahead now and uh, go to that clip. Pay no attention to other pictures, whatever you do. Uh, let's... Um, Again, get that video queued up. When, as soon as you're ready, tell me. Well, as we are live at 712 Central. Okay, okay, you've got it. Here they are in the press conference just a few hours ago saying, do not look at anything else. Whatever you do, I know nothing, nothing. Here it is. As you can see, the quality of the photos is quite good, but we will continue to work on developing additional images to improve their identification value. Further, on FBI.gov, we have photos of the suspects. The photos and videos are posted for the public and media to use, review, and publicize. For clarity, these images should be the only ones, and I emphasize the only ones, that the public should view to assist us. Other photos should not be deemed credible, and, and they unnecessarily divert the public's attention oh. in the wrong direction and create undue work for vital law enforcement resources. The photos can be viewed on our website, FBI.gov. It is important to emphasize the images from Monday are indelible and the horror of that day will remain with us forever. This further underscores our obligation to investigate this crime judiciously in order to bring these, those responsible to justice. 
The victims and the survivors deserve nothing more. Nothing less, excuse me. Yeah, I bet, they, I bet you've dehumanized him pretty bad, bud. A little eight-year-old kid. <clears throat> For, uh, hey, here, son. Here's the, pss, here, pss, here you go. Uh, I mean, you know, this is, in, oh, there's Navy SEALs 20 feet away, but no one knows what happened. I mean, this is so cold-blooded. Don't look at any other photos. God, if you ID one of our people, we're screwed. Don't look at anything. Nothing. Don't look at anything with these pictures. Of course, we said we had the suspect already caught, and it was him yesterday, but then something happened, and we had to raid it with military at the courthouse. But just just listen, listen, whatever you do, don't look at other photos. Please, oh, God, we got blown wide open on this. Our people are everywhere, all over this. Oh, God. Oh, just, just listen. Whatever you do, if you care about the victims, don't look at any other pictures. It's your job. We saw the tragedy. Do not look at other photos. Do not go to Infowars.com, whatever you do. They come over to our reporter beforehand and said, you're not going to talk, are you, buddy? Keep your mouth shut, Madandi. Well, you know what? He didn't show up. And then he went on CNN and was bullhorning while the guy was saying, it's probably veterans. You know how evil our military is. And that guy was causing trouble in the press conference. I mean, I, I, and, and they had Bill O'Reilly on last night. I just saw the clip before we went live on YouTube going, there's nobody more despicable than Alex Jones. I mean, there's, there's, there's nothing more despicable than, than, than saying, you know, look at these photos of just security everywhere right around the bomb with big black backpacks. I mean, don't look at big black backpacks. Just, just no, 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 we're saving you. We don't want trillions in weapon sales and a takeover. We wouldn't hurt a few children. I mean, we bomb whole villages whenever we feel like it. No, no, we're good people. We're good. We're, we're your friends. Sure, we did medical experiments on U.S. troops killing them and shot people up with syphilis and radiated little kids to death, but we don't do that now. Of course, the guard will still shot. We knew it was killing people, but you know, everything's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, move along now to the next piece of news. Mike Adams breaking photo services of the Kraft mobile communications van at Boston Marathon. And look at all the other guys in their little uh, Kraft uniforms. Either that or somebody's copying the Kraft uniforms that we've seen on their own website. But hey, just again, look at no one, even though these guys were 20 feet from the bomb and had big black backpacks. And look at these guys with the gray backpacks. That's what you need to look at uh, right now. And again, I'm not even saying these guys were involved. There's the guy with the Geiger counter that we told you yesterday. The whole point is, is that uh, they were in command of the situation. There was a drill, and the government has been caught uh, lying about all that. Uh, continuing, chaos engulfs Boston as mainstream media can't give its cover story straight. And that's why they canceled the press conference yesterday, had all these emergency meetings. And uh, again, boys, you said, only go to FBI.gov. Only there. Only there. Do not do, do do not look at it. Do not, if you see people in these videos with black backpacks, forget them. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep, little baby. And when you awake, you'll be under Agenda 21. Take your vaccines and go to sleep and have an autoimmune response. And when you awake, you'll be retarded, which is just what we want. And when you awake, I'll bake you a cake with 24 little horses. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's go to Dan Badandi uh, at the press conference, shutting down the third press conference as they panic, as he brings up the real issues. Dan Badandi, the InfoWars reporter, engaging the globalist at point blank range. Here it is. Your T is a comment on that aspect. Why are you denying that there was bomb drills Monday morning? We got photographs on InfoWars.com, folks. Uh, Next question, please. Next question, please. Yes. Yes. Are both suspects seen planting these devices at the finish line of the Boston Marathon? Both of them are trying to the only one who was observed planting what we believe to be the device is suspect number two with a white cap. At these time, these are the people of interest to the FBI. Yes. Yes. Do you have any information on what they did after the explosions? Any indication they were around watching? Do you have any video of them walking away? Suspect number two of, with the white cap on proceeded west on uh, Boylston Street. And that's all we know right now. Sir, can you, can you address the, uh, the, there are pictures today in newspapers all over the country, including the New York Post, that identify two men as potential suspects. I'm just wondering what it does to your investigation when things like this get out in 
these guys are wrong? I think I addressed that. Uh, thank you. And I think I addressed that question in my statement by saying the only official photos that should be officially relied upon in this investigation are those you see before you today. I do stand by that statement right now. There's no additional imminent danger that we are aware of right now. Again, again, the photos are available at FBI.gov. Uh, we'll have more information when we have something to release publicly. We'll be back, but we'll let you know. Check our website, FBI.gov. Sorry, guys. We're just not going to let you go ahead and blow up the little kids anymore. I mean, we're just going to expose you. We're done playing games. We know you got to be the hero. I mean, how many fire department guys or bomb squad guys we caught planting pipe bombs over the years? It's hundreds to be the hero. Look, we got your ammo. We know who you are. And your days of shooting kids up with experimental stuff and killing them is over. Your, your days of blowing us up are over. Your days of Oklahoma City, of the underwear bomber where the U.S. government got on the plane, it's over. I know you're all watching. And a lot of your guys are compartmentalized. I mean, look at that police chief. I mean, I'm not trying to knock the guy, but he looks like Fred Flintstone. I mean, they, I mean, they literally got the missing link in there. And that's why they won't hire cops with over 100 IQs now, because he will just, just, just believe whatever he's told. Well, I'm not that guy. I'm not the missing link, okay? I'm Cro-Magnon and beyond. And I see what the hell you're doing. I'm tired of being hunted by you, you weasel. And well, the minute here at InfoWars.com, he got very... Very, very upset. All these guys, they just sit around playing the part of tough guys. They wear uniforms. They're our bosses. They're better than us. They know everything. No, you don't. I'm not going to play games with you anymore. You've been telling us you're going to blame us for terror attacks, and you're getting ready to blame the veterans, and we see who you are. And you think you're going to win, and you're not going to win. Now, let's go ahead and go to the next piece. Speaking of you're not going to win, the info war. What a false flag. What is a false flag? Google trends show search term spike to 100 times what it was previously, to one of the top search terms in the world. And why is that? Because of our radio show and Dan Badandi. And what is a false flag? It's a known military tactic of staging terror attacks to blame your political enemies. Uh, continuing here, Obama covering up Saudi link to Boston bombing. You've got all these Saudis clearly there, whether they're involved or not. And then you've got Janet Napolitano, uh, Mr. Napolitano, uh, coming out, and we're going to play a clip of this in a moment, and saying, hey, Drudge Report is not credible. And you heard the FBI, do not look at other photos, only what we show you. Please do not look behind the curtain. Uh, they do not want you looking at those photos with just the dozens of guys with backpacks standing around right where the bomb went off. Just do not look at that. Do not look at the special forces. Do not, do not look at it. You heard me. Just here we go. Do not look at it. Bill Clinton did not have sex with that woman. There were WMDs in Iraq. You can trust the private Federal Reserve. It loves you. Um, I mean, this is what's going on here. And, 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 and then now, arm wrestling champion, WWE champion, Mr. Napolitano, formerly Mr., now Mrs., had a sex change, uh, is uh, the dung beetle, is up there telling, you've got to defile them. Oh, Madam, Madam Honorable, because you're a traitorous governor that's trying to sell in America. Oh, you're so honorable. Oh, we're so scared of you. Uh, absolutely incredible. Let's go ahead and go to the beautiful, the luscious, uh, the star of The Exorcist, uh, drum roll, please. Linda Blair says the Drudge Report is not credible. She is. So here you go. I'm, I'm very concerned about this uh, person of interest that was detained at the hospital in Boston following the uh, marathon madness. He is, I believe, scheduled to be deported next week. And now I understand he's been cleared of any wrongdoing in the involvement in Boston, but he is being deported due to national security concerns. And but CBS says this, this gentleman is here on a student visa. He was at the scene along with many other people when the blast happened. As everybody's standing in shock, three Boston PD detectives see this guy moving quickly out of the crowd. As they're watching him, he seems to be moving very deliberately, um, which could be a very natural thing after a bombing. They stop him because he's covered with the blood. They end up taking the hospital. That's straight off CBS. Um, and we're asking average Americans to help ID uh, and assist law enforcement in uh, identifying who the bomber was. 
um, see something, say something. And now we have someone who is being deported due to national security concerns, and I'm assuming that he's got some sort of link to terror or he wouldn't be being deported. He was at the scene. He could possibly ID the bomber, just like we're asking every other American that was on the scene to provide your pictures, help us identify who may have been acting funny. Everybody, we're asking that, that was in Boston, and we've got this guy who was there. Uh, we know he was there. He was arrested, or what arrested was detained in the hospital, covered with blood. He was at the scene, and yet we're going to deport him. So we're well, going to if I, if I from, might, we're going to remove him from the scene. I am unaware of anyone who is being deported for national security concerns at all related to Boston. I don't know where that. I'm not that saying it's related to Boston, but he is being deported. No, I, I, I am like unaware. I said, all the ship uh, guns again, in Mexico to blame things. Yeah, uh, 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 was technically a person. Oh uh -huh, hi, I'm John Mapozzo. We make and men live in the bathroom in our office. Proceeding there, I will clarify that for you. But I think this is an example of why it is. I was a linebacker in high school before they, uh, yeah. Job. I want them to do their Put job. My, you know what? No, we did it. Uh, me that it's negligent for us as American administration to deport someone. Listen, who I have a short haircut. Bow to me. The bombing. Um, and we're going to deport him. Not I'm to be a man and run him. off of. Is that not negligence? That, I'm not going to answer that question. It is so full with misstatements and mis. Oh yeah. What's your proof? It's just not worthy What's of. What's your proof, answer. Mister? Well, CBS reports the gentleman was there. We did detain him at the hospital. He was covered with blood. We've cleared him of any wrongdoing, but it has been reported he is being uh -huh. deported on. Charge. There's been so much reported on this that's been wrong. I can't even begin to tell you. It was you, reported that I'm a woman. We will provide you. In with truth, I'm Janet Reno. As it becomes I'm a clone of Janet Reno's butt. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just can't look at him very long without getting very upset. Oh my God, I just can't even handle it anymore. Oh, there you go. Well, Mr. Napolitano speaks, ladies and gentlemen, and when he speaks, we all listen. Oh, hold on. Who said men couldn't give birth? To a bat boy. There you go. Huh? So, <laughs> oh my God. Uh, we're gonna go to break, come back with a uh, master sergeant who was arrested for not committing any crime in Texas because, well, you're about to hear, they banned Oath Keepers from meeting. Oh, absolutely. We do have a special report first, and then we're going to come back from that into break. Uh, we've got Leanne McAdoo's piece on drones. So we've got that piece, and then we're going to come back with the uh, evil, evil active duty master sergeant who in the middle of the country thought he'd walk down the road with his son with a rifle, which we've all done. I mean, this is, this is evil. Thank God they arrested him for no crime, because, I mean, after all, the veterans are the terrorists. I mean, CNN said so. So uh, here is Leanne McAdoo's piece, and we're going to come back with my interview uh, with uh, the thought criminal. InfoWars Nightly News, and then Lord willing, tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central, is the official kickoff of InfoWars.com radio show. Free audio feeds at InfoWars.com, free video feeds right now at InfoWars.com forward slash listen. Spread it out to everybody. You must be doing that if we're getting 100,000 new visitors a minute. So uh, I'll have quite a bandwidth bill to pay, so be sure and support us by books, videos, tapes, T-shirts, all of it. And uh, here is Leanne McAdoo, and she is a miss, unlike Mr. Mr. Napolitano. Let's go ahead and go to that tape. This was a heinous and cowardly act, and given what we now know about what took place, the FBI is investigating it as an act of terrorism. Anytime bombs are used to target innocent civilians, it is an act of terror. I'm Leanne McAdoo, and this is an InfoWars special report. The Obama administration has insisted that drone strikes are authorized only against specific senior al-Qaeda leaders and their associates that were directly involved with the September 11th terror attacks and those who pose an imminent threat to America. This is in direct contrast to the findings reported last week by McClatchy, who reviewed top secret intelligence documents obtained by their national security reporter. The documents show that drone strikes in Pakistan over a four-year period didn't meet those standards of authorization, and at times, the CIA killed people who were only suspected or who probably belonged to militant groups. 
McClatchy found that during a 12-month period ending September 2011, at least 265 of the 482 people estimated to have been killed by the CIA were not senior al-Qaeda leaders, but instead were assessed as Afghan, Pakistani, and unknown extremists. In fact, according to news media accounts, drones killed only six top al-Qaeda leaders in those months. The report also lists killing of Afghan insurgents whose organization wasn't on the U.S. list of suspected terrorist groups at the time of the 9-11 strikes. 43 of 95 drone strikes reviewed for that period hit groups including unidentified individuals described as foreign fighters and other militants. In a June 2011 talk at John Hopkins University in Washington, CIA head and drone mastermind John Brennan said that the U.S. is exceptionally precise and surgical in terms of addressing the terrorist threat. And by that I mean, if there are terrorists who are within an area where there are women and children or others, you know, we do not take such action that might put those innocent men, women, and children in danger. He added that in the last year, there hadn't been a single collateral death because of the exceptional proficiency, precision of the capabilities that we've been able to develop. Accordingly, the reports McClatchy reviewed estimated there was a single civilian casualty, an individual killed in an April 22, 2011 strike in North Waziristan. However, according to a report by the BBC of that exact strike, out of the 25 casualties, five women and four children were killed in a nearby house. A 2011 investigation by the Bureau of Investigative Journalism found at least 10 individual attacks in which 45 or more civilians appear to have died. Pitch Interactive created this graphic showing the casualties of children, civilians, high-profile individuals, and others resulting from drone strikes in Pakistan between 2004 and 2013. All of this information conflicts with what Brennan had to say last year. We only authorize a particular operation against a specific individual if we have a high degree of confidence that the individual being targeted is indeed the terrorist we are pursuing. Contrary to the CIA's position that civilian casualties have been exceedingly rare, the documents show that drone operators weren't always certain who they were killing. In light of these facts, the deadly potentiality of domestic drones is even more pressing. The mass introduction of unmanned aerial vehicles is set to sweep the national airspace by 2015, yet our government has yet to set the rules by which the president is authorized to target civilians on American soil. The 12-hour filibuster in March by Senator Rand Paul highlighted this issue. I think we should all judge as inadequate the president's response when he says he hasn't killed Americans in America yet, he doesn't intend to, but that he might. I don't think that that is a response that we should tolerate. We also know that we have targeted people for sympathizing with the enemy. We've had many people who have dissented in our country. We've had people in our country who have been against the Afghan war, against the Iraq war. I was opposed to the Iraq war. What are the criteria for who will be killed? Could political dissent be part of the standard for drone strikes? And you say, well, that's ridiculous. We have listed people already on websites and said that they were risk for terrorism for their political beliefs. Considering the recent media spin targeting patriots and then lumping them in the same category as al-Qaeda, are we not setting the stage for drones to be used freely on American soil against those with dissenting opinions? Can you kill non-combatants? And people say, well, the president would never kill non-combatants. The problem is, is that's who we're killing overseas. Reports show that 98% of the casualties from U.S. drone strikes are civilians. Anytime bombs are used to target innocent civilians, it is an act of terror. So by his own definition, does Obama consider himself a terrorist? I'm Leanne McAdoo, and this has been an InfoWars special report. Yes, these men and their hypnotized followers call this a new order. It is not new, and it is not honor. Jakari Jackson here, and I want to talk to you for a second about water. You know about ProPure, our flagship water purification system, but check out some of our portable water filter products at InfoWarsStore.com. The clearly filtered.
water pitcher. Also, for those of you on the go, we have the Athlete Edition filtered water bottle and the RAD Eliminator Pro Filtered Sports Bottle that removes radiation. And keep in mind, we have replacement filters for all of these products. The ever popular grab and go back favorite, the Life Straw, the Crystal Quest Shower Filter System, and the Aquapod Kit, great for mass storage of water. And while you're at the InfoWars shop, pick up a copy of our latest book, 31 Days to Survival. You can find all this and more at the InfoWarsStore.com. And don't forget, it's your support that funds our operation. Sign up for our free newsletter at InfoWars.com forward slash newsletter. I'm Darren McBreen, and these are some of the new items that are available now at InfoWarsShop.com. Alert the public to Obama's blatant abuse of power with the new Obama t-shirt. Obama's joker face on the front and come and take it on the back. It's time to publicly call him out for what he is, a tyrant. Defend the Second Amendment with our top seller come and take it t-shirts. And look at that, women's cut tank tops and t-shirts now available. Nice hat. Plus, the don't tread on me flag. And now you can become a micro distributor of the InfoWars magazine. Plus, get your own copy delivered right to your door each and every month. And if you're tired like I am of you and your family being exposed to polluted drinking water, get the Pro One High Performance Water Filter. It gets rid of all pathogenic bacteria, cyst, fluoride, heavy metals, and numerous other contaminants. So join the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. You're trying to disarm me illegally. I am going to disarm you. Illegally. I, no, sir. Am I threatening you? Once I find out there's no issue, then we're am going to I, Am I doing you, something against the law? you're going to be on your way. Am I doing something against Keep the law? Keep your hands away from the gun. I don't have my hand near the gun. Put your other hand away from the gun. I'm holding my camera. Get it away from the gun. It's away from the gun. Okay. Now, you're going to let me go? No, I'm not going to let you You're go. about to get yourself a civil lawsuit. Well, you can get a civil lawsuit or whatever we need to do right now until so, I find out you can legally have the gun and you can be out here. Oh, do I need a license to hold this gun? No, I've done nothing illegal. But yet this guy decides he wants to get against the car when I've done right nothing. He has no right to disarm me. No, he has no right to disarm me if I'm not breaking the law. No, he does not. Yes, sir, he does. No, he doesn't. If he feels threatened, he may disarm me. You have but I have done nothing. Where's your identification? Shut up, I'm talking to you. Where's your identification? Freaking sergeant at? right now. It's in my pocket. Which pocket? This one right here. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, am I accused of a crime? I'm not letting. I, I do not consent to you going through my wallet. I do not consent to you going through my wallet. Is this on you camera? Do you have any more guns? I do over not. Here. Yes, I do. I have a 45 on my side. On my left side. Do you have a concealed carry? Yes, I have a concealed carry permit. Okay. Sir, you have no right to go through there. I'm telling you right now. Yeah, he didn't ask me for it, did he? Not with you carrying this, no, sir. I wouldn't have asked you either. He could have asked me for my concealed carry permit. But even if I had a concealed, did not have a concealed carry permit, I can walk around with a rifle. When you alarm people and they call us, then we can come Okay, and, you, and did you explain to them what the law is, sir? They don't care what the law is. Oh, but do you alarmed. care what the law is? This day and age, they're alarmed when they see somebody with weapons. Do you have I, I any more I, weapons I, on you? We have the right, by law, to disarm you until okay, we Okay, do you know what that them. law says? That law says if you feel threatened, you and may I feel threatened. Well, if I'm you threatened. feel threatened, then you're a sorry excuse for a police officer. Well, then I'm... I'd like to do this in front of the camera, please. No, I'd like to be in front of your camera. You're, you're under arrest. arrest. You're going to jail. What am I so under arrest for? What am I under arrest for? Sir, can you tell me the law? Because Master Sergeant Grisham knew the law, and the cop says, I don't need a law. They don't care about a law. You scared them. Well, hell, a lot of these communists in this country are scared by men and women and families. I mean, they're scared by liberty. They're scared by freedom. Do I have to comport with all of their anti-gun fervor where they get scared to death to see a citizen with a gun? You'll never convince these anti-gun people. 
49% drop in violent crime in the last 20 years. The FBI's own statistics that we're putting on screen right now, and they still don't care. They want my guns, and they say collectively that I am guilty for Sandy Hook when it's obviously some psychiatric victim who stole guns illegally. It's incredible. And all over the country, people are getting arrested for carrying firearms legally, including in rural areas. I many years ago, six, seven years ago at our ranch in East Texas, was walking from one piece of our property down the road to another in the middle of nowhere in East Texas. I'm talking 10 miles to a gas station. And the cops pulled over and got in my face and said, where are you going? What are you doing? Are you poaching? And it's this idea that gun owners are somehow bad. And this isn't California. This isn't New York City. This is in the middle of nowhere outside of Temple, Texas. And we are joined now via video Skype from his car. He was just giving blood to the uh, victims of the huge explosion uh, there at the fertilizer uh, plant. So he's just left the hospital there. Uh, Army Master Sergeant C.J. Grisham. And he, he joins us right now. His video obviously has been seen millions of times on TV and uh, on YouTube. And this is what everybody should do. Carry a camera. Show what's happening. And I've said carry uh, not just a camera, but go out and do the open carries. Because we show everybody we still have this right. If you don't exercise it, you lose it. Why would you be scared of someone with a gun openly in the middle of the country? You should be scared of criminals that are out there uh, robbing. And we see the countless videos of people with guns uh, coming into places to rob people and citizens with concealed carries actually take them out. So Army Master Sergeant joins us. He's going to uh, take legal action right now. Last time I checked, hasn't gotten his guns back. We'll find out if that's uh, changed. But this affects every gun owner. And if they can take the Second Amendment, they can take it all. Uh, Master Sergeant C.J. Grisham, thank you so much for coming on the broadcast. And here you are having to defend the Second Amendment in America. And Alex, it's not just the Second Amendment. We're talking about the Fourth and the Fifth as well. But uh, obviously it started with a violation of my Second Amendment rights and then kind of carried over into the fourth and fifth once I was illegally disarmed and illegally arrested. Um, it, it's, it, it's a shame that it's happening here in Texas because uh, it, it, that's not something that, that people think happens here. I mean, I, I've heard from people across the country saying, you know, I was about to move from Connecticut because of these new laws to Texas, but I'm not so sure now. And people from Colorado saying the same thing. Um, so it is important that, I mean, we, for the most part, uh, Texas is a very pro-gun state. The problem is we've got these singular police officers out there um, that have these power trips, and that's really what it is. I don't think this is a Second Amendment issue so much as it is a, uh, a power trip kind of issue. For those that don't know, you say that right before you turn the camera on out there with your, well, well, you tell the whole story. Tell us what happened before, during, and now after, and where this case is going. Yeah, so my son and I are out on a, a 10 mile hike. He he planned the course. We intentionally planned it in a rural area because um, first we can start and stop at the house. We live in the country. And uh, be, because of the feral hogs and things, he knew I was gonna be carrying a rifle. So, uh, you know, we didn't go anywhere where there's a lot of hikers. We just tried to use back country roads. Sure, that's your right. I mean, out there, and, and, and of course I live out in the country um, close to where you're at. I mean, it's just infested with cougars and hogs. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, about five miles into the hike, uh, I hear someone tell, you know, asking me to stop. And I turn around and there's uh, a police officer getting out of his car. Now, the, the lights aren't are not on. Uh, he's he doesn't have his gun drawn. He approaches me very casually and he asks us what we're doing. And and again, it was a, a very casual request. You know, what, what are you guys out here doing? And I told him that we were doing a hike for my son's merit badge. And then he looks at my rifle and he says, uh, what are you doing with the rifle? And as I'm answering, because I told him, I, I said, well, does it matter? It's, am I breaking the law? Because um, I know I don't have to answer any questions if I'm not suspected of a crime. And uh, at that point, he, he, grabbed, he grabbed my rifle. And that's just not something you do to anybody, much less a, uh, you know, a combat veteran or a soldier. Um, and when he grabbed my, my rifle, my instinct uh, was to retrieve it. And, you know, I took a step back. I mean, keep in mind, the rifle was attached to me anyway. And uh, so once he grabbed my rifle and I, I grabbed it back and stepped back, I said, what do you think you're doing? You're not going to disarm me. And at that point, he pulled his pistol on me. And uh, I, I realized this can get ugly and in front of my son or, you know, I can try and de-escalate the situation. So 
he told me to get my hands off the off the gun and move over towards his car. I did just that. I put my hands, you know, away from the gun and moved towards uh, the front of his car. As I approached his car uh, from behind, he slammed me down into the the hood of his car. And that's when uh, I realized and remembered that we have this camera, which at the time I only had the camera because it's a part of his hiking merit badge requirement that he document uh, these these hikes. And so that's why we had brought it. And I'm so glad that I did because once he threw me on the car, I remembered, hey, I've got this camera and I turned it on. And then of course the rest you can see in the video. Man, I tell you, I had about 12 years ago a carpet cleaner place at my house and there was a gun case on the wall and the guy ran off because he was from New York and thought guns were illegal and started calling the police on me. But luckily they understood it was just, you know, a fruit loop and, and didn't come, but it became a whole issue. And they have these billboards all over the country saying report illegal guns that show an image of a revolver. And now all these weirdos call the police even if they're in your house or see uh, all the time it's in the news where a guy's loading a deer rifle in the back of his truck or car to go deer hunting or the shooting range and the cops get called. And it's just so crazy that the cop says, well, if people get scared, we take your guns. Doesn't matter what the Bill of Rights says. Doesn't matter if the country was founded when the Redcoats came um, 200 plus years ago tomorrow to take the guns at Lexington and Concord. They feel threatened. And so that trumps common law, Bill of Rights, Constitution, that is the rules and regulations that govern these police. I mean, what can you say about that? And then what happened once you were in the police car? Because what happened uh, you know, after the tape is turned off? So after the tape is turned off, I tell my son uh, that, hey, these guys are going to take you home. You do not have to answer any of their questions. I made that very clear. I said, do you understand? You do not have to answer any of their questions. All the officers heard that. My son heard that. He says, OK, you know, and he's he's obviously very distraught. Um, what I learned later was that um, my son, when he when we got to the house, because I told him, don't say a word until you, until mom's there. Mom will answer any questions that, that he's got. Um, so they get to they pull up into the house and the uh, you know, my son didn't say a word the whole way. And he says, I know your dad told you uh, not to answer any questions, but I need some information. And he starts asking him questions about you know, just name, age, birth date, eye color, those kinds of things. And he doesn't answer, he keeps quiet. And uh, the, the officer says, look, you're not getting out of this car until you answer my questions. Unbelievable. And that, that scared my son. Uh, and so, you know, he answered all the questions and then the officer opened the door, let him get out, took, took him up to the door, explained to my wife that I was in jail for resisting arrest and, um, uh, I think rudely displaying a firearm. And it wasn't until the officer left that my son told my wife what had happened either. Uh, because uh, again, he was afraid that, you know, the officer might do something if he said it. Um, but when I was in the police car, I didn't say a word. Uh, it's, it's interesting because uh, in the back of this car, he had a little sticker on the uh, plexiglass window in front of me. And it says, we answer to no one but God. And and I said, uh, you're going to have a lot of, a lot of uh, explaining to do. <laughs> and did he say anything to that? He did not. But that's the only thing I said in the entire ride was, wow, you guys answer only to God. you got a lot of explaining to do. Well, I like to walk around bird hunting. I like to walk around deer hunting, hog hunting, whatever. And we've got an old family property we got under a Mexican land grant in 1829 in East Texas. And imagine I'm walking from one 200-acre piece to a larger piece, maybe a half mile away. And there's nothing out there. I mean, it, it, all the houses down the road are my cousins and family. And, yep. and, and they were really upset that a clear guy's walking along. Um, I think it was a mini 14 I had or something. They are like, why do you have a rifle? And I'm like, well, I mean, this is my property. I'm just out here walking around. Well, are you poaching? It's this idea that we're all bad. We're all suspects. Well, you know, what about them being suspect? I mean, what about our founders saying don't have a standing army domestically? I'm threatened by the way they're acting. I'm threatened by their guns because they're acting belligerent to me, the boss. I mean, in America, it's we, the people. It's the consent of the governed. And I think, you know, I mean, I see this more and more all over the country where uh, gun owners are treated like absolute crap. Uh, what happened once you got to jail? Well, I got to jail and uh, the booking officer took, took control of me. Uh, he, he's a 22 year army vet. And you know, he's like, hey, you in the army? And we, we had a little chat and he says, what are you in here for? 
And I said, well, the charge is resisting arrest. And he said, no, I mean, but what, what were you accused of before you resisted arrest? And I said, no, 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 there was no charge. I was accused of resisting arrest. And uh, he, he was sort of, you know, kind of incredulous about it. And uh, he's like, all right, look, uh, tell you what, you know, let me, let me see what I can do to get you out of here on a PR, which is a, a personal recognizance. Um, you know, I explained the whole situation to him. My son and I were just walking down the road. And keep in mind, still to this point, I I was not read my rights. Uh, I was, you know, never never told that I was under arrest until I was under arrest for resisting arrest. Uh, but the booking guy, he, he was a pretty decent dude and said, you know, he's going to try and get me out of there. The problem was it was a Saturday. And the judges or the uh, magistrates that, that approved the personal recognizance bail weren't in until Monday. Uh, so I had a choice. I could wait until Monday or I could post my $2,500 bond. Yeah. Uh, so I, I spent 10 and a half hours in jail while my wife ran around the city, $300 at a time, pulling money out of ATMs uh, so that she could pay my cash bail because we weren't, we didn't want to get a bondsman. What is the aftermath of this, Ben? I mean, obviously, all over Fox News, all over the internet, tens of millions of viewers of this. I mean, have you gotten any word back? On, on, I mean, the fact that you clearly didn't resist, but to show you a lesson, they're going to falsely charge you an incredible tyranny. Now they've backed off on that. But I mean, it's just outrageous. Clearly, it's false arrest. What are your lawyers saying? What's going to come out of this? I mean, if we don't punish this guy, and I'm not a vindictive person, but if we don't punish this arrogant person, uh, the sky's the limit. So, so where is this going? And what would you personally, because he'll watch it, want to say to this goofball? Yeah, I mean... You know, what, what my attorney is going to do, I don't really want to go into, but here's what I want. Um, I, first of all, these guys that were on the scene do not deserve to wear the badge. I, when they illegally arrested me, when they illegally took my firearms, and when, when they fabricated their incident report, uh, if you, they forfeited any right to the authority that that badge holds. Uh, they completely ignored the Constitution, so I, I, I think they need to be fired. That's what I want. I want them fired. Uh, I want the police academies to start training officers on how to handle armed citizens. I, I think there also needs to be a change in the call centers. I think if somebody calls 911 and says, hey, there's a guy walking down the road, why do we just automatically send a police officer out there? Why not ask follow-up questions? Well, what's the guy doing? Well, he's just walking down the road. Is he pointing the gun at anybody? No. Okay. Uh, is, he, is he threatening anybody? Or, I mean, what's he doing? No, he's just walking down the road. I don't think he should have a gun. Okay, ma'am. Uh, yeah, thanks for calling, but uh, you know he's not breaking the law. If if you feel threatened or he, he starts doing something that's against the law, please call us. Exactly. But doing. even if they drove by you and said, "Hey, let me just check. Okay, you're out merit badge. I hear you." I mean, it would be too far and wouldn't be in his right. But even if he said, "Let's let me check your license or something," that would still be bad. But the fact that they pushed you around and took you to jail and said, we don't care what the law is. I mean, it, it's belligerent against our republic. It is outrageous what that sergeant did. Well, you know, and, and the reason they feel empowered to do that, and I've learned this since, since everything hit the, the net, is because, you know, I, I can't tell you how many people have, have commented and said, why didn't you just do what you were told? Why, you know, you would have been out of there in five minutes if you would have just given them your guns and answered all his questions. And when you've got a citizenry like that, that's, that, that believes you should just surrender your rights uh, to make it easier on yourself. You know, Ben Franklin said, uh, those who sacrifice uh, security for, or, uh, sacrifice liberty for security deserve neither liberty nor security. That's right. And I, I, I completely believe in that. And, uh, you know, yes, it, it inconvenienced me. Uh, the the encounter that was that could have been a five minute encounter became you know a, a fifteen to sixteen. Yeah, but let me stop encounter. you. They I see because I'm a news hound. I follow the news every day, seven days a week. I read hundreds of news articles. Every week I see where somebody's in a rural area and gives them the gun and complies. They take them to jail. Uh, I mean, I hear about. I mean, I've done the interviews where a guy with no criminal record has a reloading thing in his basement, and he's showing his house to sell it. This happened to uh, one of our riders in, in, in Colorado in the middle of nowhere, and the police SWAT teamed him over the reloading because it, uh, it scared the realtor, and they still went ahead and confiscated all his stuff. 
just because, well, it's scary, we've got to like act like what you've done is wrong. This is a demonization, like the Attorney General said, brainwash people against guns. They are acting like you are criminal because you have a gun, period. And if you can't even walk through the middle of the Texas Hill Country with a rifle, this isn't America. Yeah, I find it I find it very ironic that I can go to Second Amendment uh, rallies at the at the steps of the Capitol in Austin with uh, my AR strapped on my back, uh, but I can't walk through a, a countryside uh, with with the same rifle without getting harassed. It's a uh, it's a little ironic. Well, that's because you've got a bunch of gun owners together there, and the state police know the right, and you've it's been exercised at the Capitol so much we've taken that hill. And, and, and that's why I commend what you did. Um, in fact, tell people about your friend uh, and what happened to him. And Because, I, listen, I'm going to start going out and, and, and openly bearing arms because it's a civil right, like black people going to a lunch counter they're not allowed to. We have to exercise this or lose it. Yeah, so the, the only reason uh, that I was as aggressive as I was is because just a couple months ago, uh, a staff sergeant, Nate Sampson, was, last year he was arrested. Uh, for legally carrying a concealed weapon. And he explained, uh, he quoted the law to him because at his unit in the Army, he is the, um, the, the CHL instructor for the, for the battalion. So he teaches CHL law and, and firearms law in, in Texas to troops. And so he was illegal arrested, charged with a chumped up, a, a false, false crime. He quoted the law to the officers. They refused to look it up. He even said, look, I'll show you on my phone that I'm not violating the law. They refused to do that. Uh, for 10 months, this guy had to spend his hard earned money. And you know, a staff sergeant doesn't make a lot of money in the army and he's married and, he, and they just had a baby. Uh, so the last thing he needed to do was spend thousands of dollars to defend himself against the trumped up charge. It took him 10 and a half months, Alex, to get his guns back. And, and it cost him $3,000 uh, at least. Um, he also lost his leadership position in, the, in his unit in the Army because of this charge while, while everything was going on. Um, and so I had, I had that on fresh in my mind because I had just learned about Sergeant Sampson the prior month. And so when, when that happened to me and those officers began their assault, that's what I call it. I, I think it, I was assaulted. When he, when he touched my rifle, he assaulted me. Oh, it's clear when he's sitting there, like he keeps pushing you onto the hood. I mean, it's disgusting. Right. And it's, I remembered that I am not going to let this continue to happen in Texas or anywhere around here. Somebody's got to finally stand up and put an end to this. And, uh, and that's why I, I really fought it. I fought it because it's got to stop somewhere. And I'm, I'm at a point where I can afford to fight a fight like this and defend myself, um, both professionally as well as uh, you know financially uh, to a degree obviously well that's my are... next point you are literally like in the old days you know our champion out there putting yourself there Get, tell people we're gonna put it on screen your website and your legal defense fund because our viewers they need to donate to this because if we don't stand together and give our time our treasure to people that are willing to be a you know, walking point as you're doing we're going to lose everything now is the time to spend our time our energy our money to pour it all out because this is a collectivist takeover where they're trying to intimidate us as the attorney general has said and and and, and blacken the name of all gun owners and, and i just want to commend what you're doing because because standing up against this is so essential we have to stand up to show the injustice this is the new civil rights movement this is the new New fight for liberty. It's how our country was founded. It's how Texas was founded. And, and, and you were walking in those same footsteps. So tell us, tell us how we support you. Well, uh, my, my blog is called A Soldier's Perspective. I've had it since 2005. Uh, you can go to soldiersperspective.us uh, and read uh, where I write about the, why I chose the hard right over the easy wrong. Um, there's a, there's a, a website set up. Indiegogo is the name of the uh, fundraiser site. If you go to Indiegogo and uh, type in Second Amendment Legal Defense Fund, uh, you can donate there. You can uh, PayPal me directly, cj at soldiersperspective.us. Um, and, and really, you know, get the word out there. Spread the video. Talk to your police officers. Talk to the chiefs of police, the sheriffs, and say, hey, what do you think about this? And, and find out what your local law enforcement thinks about how these police officers act, because that will tell you 
where they stand on this issue and whether or not they need to be removed from their office. Uh, we, we can't have, and, and, and Alex, I really do have to say, the majority of the Temple Police Department are great guys. I've had numerous encounters with Temple Police Department and no problems at all. Um, th this, was, th this was a guy that I don't think is representative of the Temple Police Department. Uh, so I, I don't want to cast that wide net. Sure, but he's an arrogant dumbass. I mean, even after he ran your, your, your ID and no criminal record, staff sergeant, combat vet, bronze stars, all this stuff. It just, and, and then to try to charge you with resisting, just the, that's evil. I mean, that is evil to try to ruin your life. You'd lose your, 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 your position. You'd be kicked out of the military. I mean, God knows what would happen. He wants to ruin your life just to prove he's right. Yeah, and not only that, but when, when they knew that the resisting arrest charge wasn't going to stick, you know, they, they, they find this other charge of interfering with public duties. And my response to that is, if it's the, if it's the police officer's job to illegally disarm citizens, charge me with interference every day. Because I'm not going to stand for being illegally disarmed. Nobody, nobody should stand for being illegally disarmed. Yeah, they committed the crime under common law, Bill of Rights, Constitution, Texas Constitution. They're in the wrong. Right. Yeah. So uh, that's and that's that's what people can do. I mean, it's it's more about, you know, it's not so much about money. It's about education. And the the, the it starts in the elementary schools and it, you know, it continues all the way up through the college. And then, you know, these people become professors and they become politicians. And I mean, look, right now, uh, Lautenberg is now talking about banning black powder or making you go through background checks to get black powder. And I remember the British did that in 1774, and that didn't turn out so well for him. Well, that's why I told Piers Morgan, uh, who's now fleeing criminal charges, you know, you know, they're arresting all those underlings in England. I mean, I mean, there seems to be no end to this arrogance, and they know. The Attorney General says, we're going to make them look bad. We're going to blame them for everything. And what do you think of every sitcom, drama shows, demonizing patriots? What do you think of the Homeland Security stuff saying, Al-Qaeda is now not the threat. It's returning veterans, gun owners, Christians. I, I mean, I can't even believe this. It's like a Twilight Zone episode. It is. And, you know, I, I've been on this belief for a few years now that we are we are now living in an extra constitutional society. Well, I know you're active duty and can't say a lot about what's happening in the Army. But but I mean, can you tell us what your what your colleagues are saying about this? Well, the the uh, the Army, I mean, to the degree that they're not doing anything, have, have been very supportive. Obviously, this is not a, uh, a fight that the Army wants to get into right now. Um, because it's, uh, you know, there's there's no right way to do it. So um, right now the army's not really doing anything. Uh, they're, 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 they haven't removed me from any positions. Uh, I, I the day after the incident took place, I went and told my supervisors exactly what happened because I didn't want anybody to get blindsided. And, and and I live in Temple, so it you know the likelihood that it was going to hit the blotter was low. Um, but I did all the right things. I, I told him exactly what happened. And I've been, for my part, I've been very supported in, in the sense that nobody's done anything to, to try and stop me. Well, I'll say this about Temple. My family on the Gresham and Air side founded Temple. And, and, and I'm ashamed of the people in Temple if they don't go to the city council and everywhere else and have these officers removed, especially the, uh, the one that was slamming you around and all this. These are despicable people, and I don't take pleasure attacking them, but they are despicable. I mean, it is what it is. They're despicable. They're rogue. They're out of control. And they should, like, quit and go move to San Francisco or move to New York City, and maybe they can be on Bloomberg's protection detail with all those disarmed slaves because this is disgusting, and everyone should go to your blog. Uh, and donate today, and I want you to have civil rights lawsuit, you name it. We, you're right. We have to get aggressive with these people politically, because I'm so sick of gun owners being persecuted. I can't tell you, as a newsman, how many. I've, I, no exaggeration. Over the last 10 years, probably a hundred articles I've seen, every few weeks where there'll be some old vet, it's always an old vet, in a quasi-rural area, in the garage on a summer, cleaning their guns, and a neighbor comes by and calls the SWAT team, and they take them to jail, and they take their guns and say, he had 12 guns, it was an arsenal, and there's no law, I'll call the department up and go, well, there was no law, but people were scared. 
What I mean, how do they arrest people when there's no law? I mean, it, it's so creepy. And, and that's why we're not going to stop with just having the charges dropped. We're, we, we are filing a civil lawsuit. I signed the contract yesterday with, uh, with my attorney. Um, and we're, we're, we're just, we're going to put an end to it one way or the other. And unfortunately, uh, you know, it's, I'm sure they're probably going to dig their heels in, but for the sake of people like Sergeant Sam, Sampson and, and the other troops in this area that have reached out to me and said, this happened to me as well. Um, I, I just, I, I don't want another sure. soldier to have to go through what I went through and, and not, not just soldiers. I don't want any, any citizen to go through what I've gone through. Well, listen, when I was a kid and then even a teenager and 20 something everywhere, even the city, you know, good old boys had rifles in their uh, you know, cab. They had it up there with the gun rack. And then the reason that ended is the cops pull you over and harass you. A guy driving around in a truck with a deer rifle, he's not hiding and he's obviously not a criminal. That only scares criminals. This is not Chicago, yeah. you know, murder capital of the world where they've taken the guns. So it's time for us to do what you've done. Exercise it or lose it. Thank you so much for the time. I want to give you three or four minutes to make any other point, Sergeant, Master Sergeant, that you want to make about this fight. But I want to just say this. Your fight is our fight. And if the viewers out there, if the viewers out there don't stand with you and don't donate and don't support you when they dig their heels in, if we don't dig these people out, these violators of our republic, then we deserve everything that happens. Because like you said, they have violated your fourth, your fifth. They falsely charged you. And if they'll do that in, in like deep in the heart of Texas, I mean, Ted Nugent lives down the street from you. I mean, Ted Nugent, you know, he lives right there. I'm going to talk to Uncle Ted. Have you heard what yep. he has to say about this? Oh, I, I didn't even know he weighed in on it. Yeah, but well, I mean, there's some stuff on his side, but I'm going to call him tonight and see what he has to say. But Ted Nugent needs to come to your aid I mean, because, you know, he knows all the police in that area and that county. This is outrageous. Other points you'd like to add? Yeah, just, uh, I mean, again, the an exercise or a right that's not exercised is a right that's lost. And we, we need to stop. We need to get away from this mentality. I don't disrespect police officers. I really don't. My my refusal to answer questions or standing up to them has nothing to do with disrespect. It has to do with respecting rights. And, you know, I, I, I shake the hands of police officers everywhere I go. But when I'm, when I'm the, the target, when I'm the guy that, that the phone call is against, unless I'm charged with a crime, I do not answer any questions. And I will not surrender any, any of my rights. And we need to stop doing that. We need to stop, get, we need to get out of this mentality that it's just easier if we do what they say. But if we do what they say and what they say is illegal or unconstitutional, then all then what we are telling them is it's OK to disobey the Constitution. It's OK to dis disobey the law and you don't have to honor your oath. Sure. Uh, what do you make of, um, of of other things happening in America? I, mean, I know you're active duty, but what's your, what's your take on them meeting with the Saudi ambassador last night? or the Saudi foreign minister and like releasing all these guys, these Saudis that were at the event, and then the media trying to blame Tea Partiers uh, out of the gate saying it's not, like two days ago, it's not Saudi Arabia, it's a Tea Partier. Well, if they don't know who did it, how are they saying it's patriots that did it? Yeah, I mean, I'll just, I, I guess I'll uh, phrase it this way. I Again, I think we live in an extra constitutional society. Um, it, that, that, that's the media's M.O. I mean, anytime there's anything, the, the first thing they're going to go to is the Tea Party. They, they've uh, demonized the Tea Party to no end, and it's probably not going to ever stop. All right. Well, listen, thank you. Anything else you'd like to add? After the interview's over, you'll want to probably remember something. Uh, no, sir. I think I'm good. Well, so when's the suit getting filed? Very soon? Um, well, like I said, we just filed a, or filed the uh, paperwork for the contract yesterday. I think next week is when um, it'll be filed with the Texas Tort Committee or whatever it's called. And the Texas Tort Commission will decide whether or not uh, they're going to just pay out or they're going to make it go to trial. Uh, and what my attorney said is they haven't they've never paid out. Um, they always take it to trial, whether they're, they're going to win or lose, because they don't want to just admit that their officers were wrong. CJ Grisham, what I mean, I would advise you to do that as well, but launch multiple defenses. I would go to the city council yourself and I have people videotape and put that on YouTube and I would start a media campaign uh, and, and, and just go in there and say, you've got rogue officers 
doing this or was this ordered? I would call for an investigation. I would go meet with the police chief. I would uh, I would go meet with the uh, the sheriff as well and say, Sheriff, are you going to tell your deputies act like this? I mean, I think that's a good course as well. I'm pretty much staying away from the police until this uh, this criminal charge is over with, because the last thing I want is, uh, you know, to, to have them invent something else. Uh, but but I definitely plan on meeting with the city council and expressing myself once the criminal charges have been dropped. And that's what I expect. Wow. C.J. Grisham, uh, thank you so much for the time. And again, we're going to put up on screen your website here for people. Uh, uh, is your site uh, the best place to go? Yeah, that's the best place to go. And they can find a link right there to donate. All right. Well, thank you so much for the time. And thanks for standing up for the Second Amendment. Thank you. Yeah, just go to ASP in the news link, and it'll have all the information there. ASP right there in the news link, folks. Click on that, as you can see on screen, and then go to the ASP link uh, right there, and you can uh, donate right there uh, on the uh, website. All right, we'll talk to you again soon and get updates on this. Thanks, Alex. All right, folks. Well, that's it for this edition of InfoWars Nightly News. And again... Uh, it, it's very simple. If you don't exercise a right, it's like a muscle, it will atrophy, you will lose it. And the arrogance of police, and I know most police are not bad people, but the, but the orders coming down are to act in this arrogant fashion, and the idea that the cop says, hey, I don't care what the law is. People, you know, people are, don't like the way this looks, I'm going to arrest you. I mean, those people are tyrants. They're engaged in an illegal arrest. I'll say it. People that deserve to go to jail are those cops. Uh, and I'm not a vindictive person, but, you know, they are so arrogant about our liberties and would try to put him in jail for what, five years, the charge would have had, ruin that guy's life for no reason when he has no criminal record. You deserve to spend 50 years in prison for trying to falsely throw him in jail. Listen, I'm a human being. The sergeant's a human being. You're a human being. Your children are human beings. They have no future when you maniacs act like this. You are maniacs. I have a friend who went to jail named Chris Athanas, and he was on the edge of UT where they have, you know, a, you know, no concealed carry rule. And he was like talking to people about silver a decade ago. And, and the Federal Reserve, people thought the silver was illegal just because he was down there talking to some people. And the cops came and he had a concealed carry and they said, step right over here, there were UT police. And they got him to step over into UT, and then they they arrested him. Uh, they went at you know they they threw the book at him. He spent jail time on that, and they just sleep good. They feel great. They enjoy themselves while all of this uh, is happening. They feel good. It's like Michael Morton case. They knew the guy was innocent, but kept him in jail when his wife had been killed, and they knew who even did it, and they tried to keep the DNA from going public. And that was just north of Austin, uh, pretty close to where this happens. I mean, you just get a bunch of entitled people uh, that literally think that they are God and that we are all here to basically be run over and completely uh, dominated and controlled. Again, just go to Indiegogo and type in Second Amendment Legal Defense Fund, and you'll find it. They've raised 35000 That's more than their goal of 11000 but that's an initial deal with a lawyer. These cops are going to dig their heels in. Um, this guy is a trooper for free, and we need to go all the way and support him so that he can really deal with these people and make this an example of people that think that gun owners are criminals to have our rights trampled in the dust. Our veterans fought and died, not just our current veterans, but all the way back to George Washington and many of our ancestors that we have the right to keep and bear arms. And how dare people, because a bunch of California trendies have moved into Central Texas, arrest people walking through the middle of nowhere with a rifle. You'd be crazy out there with wolves and coyotes and cougars that don't have a rifle out there. So we commend what he's done. This has been a legendary day in the info war. There's no doubt about it. The FBI on the news saying, don't look at other photos. Um, they don't want you to know what was really behind this. A false flag to blame gun owners and libertarians and conservatives and constitutionalists for what happened. And I want to commend the crew working overdrive. I want to commend you, the viewers and listeners who've supported us. Be sure and support our info war as well, because it's your info war. Just as we support the sergeant, the master sergeant, and just as we support your liberty, you support our liberty. We're together. 
Who was it that said one of the founders? Was it Benjamin Franklin? We'll hang together or hang separate? We will surely hang together or hang separate? We are brothers and sisters in an honorable code of liberty. And, and just as my father had a father and a mother and they had a father and mother, there is that genetic hand, hand to hand, right back to our ancestors. We are just a few steps away from the founders of this country. Just as people that come after us will be a few steps away from us. This is history happening. This is the fight. <laughs> We, came, we became a bunch of domesticated slaves and this happened. Why not awaken and say no? And that's starting to happen. Look at Dan Badandi going to three press conferences and shutting them all down. International news. We're getting 100,000 visitors a minute right now at Infowars.com. That's got to be 10 times the previous traffic record. People are finding out about liberty. The term false flag is at 100 times, literally, what it's ever been before. People searching it. Uh, Self-inflicted wound. People are researching that. False flag, all of it. We're winning because we stood up. We took action. The globalists are just men like us. They're women just like you. But they're evil. And they count on ignorance and weakness to win. We count on strength and honor to win. Strength and honor. Forever. This is history happening right now. And 18 years of info war is now bearing fruit on a massive scale. So we go forward over the enemy flak knowing we're over the target. That's it for this live, worldwide transmission of InfoWars Nightly News. Retransmission starts now at InfoWars.com forward slash listen. Please spread that link to everyone you know.